Hi, and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to use Le Chatelier's principle to predict the effect of changing pressure on reversible reactions at equilibrium. In the last video, we looked at Le Chatelier's principle. Le Chatelier's principle states that when an external change is applied to a system at equilibrium, the equilibrium moves in the direction that reduces the effect of that change. In this video, we're looking at how Le Chatelier's principle can be applied to reversible reactions involving gases. I'm showing you here the reaction for the Haber process, which is a reversible reaction. In this reaction, the gases nitrogen and hydrogen are reacted to form the gas ammonia. Because this is a reversible reaction, the ammonia can also convert back to nitrogen and hydrogen. With reactions involving gases, we can change the position of the equilibrium by changing the pressure. Now, there's a key idea here that you need to understand. Gas pressure is proportional to the number of moles of gas present. The equation shows us that one mole of nitrogen reacts with three moles of hydrogen to make two moles of ammonia. We have a total of four moles on the reactant side and two moles on the product side. So what that means is that if the equilibrium was entirely on the left, in other words, just reactants, the pressure would be twice as great as if the equilibrium was entirely on the right, in other words, just products. Okay, so imagine that this reaction has reached equilibrium. What would happen to the position of the equilibrium if we increase the pressure? Well, going back to Le Chatelier's principle, we know that when an external change is applied to a system at equilibrium, the equilibrium moves in the direction that reduces the effect of that change. We're increasing the pressure, so this means that the equilibrium will move in the direction that reduces the pressure. As we've seen, the right-hand side of the equation has fewer moles than the left-hand side. So that means that in order to reduce the pressure, the equilibrium will move towards the right. Okay, now I'd like you to use Le Chatelier's principle to describe what would happen to the equilibrium if we reduce the pressure of this reaction. So pause the video and try this yourself. Okay, if we reduce the pressure, then the equilibrium will move in the direction that increases the pressure. In this reaction, because we have more moles on the left of the equation, the equilibrium will move towards the left. Here's another reaction involving gases. In this reaction, the gas dinitrogen tetroxide, which is colourless, forms the gas nitrogen dioxide, which is brown. I'd like you to use Le Chatelier's principle to work out what will happen to the position of the equilibrium if we increase the pressure. So pause the video now and try this yourself. OK, if we increase the pressure, then the equilibrium will move in the direction that reduces the pressure. On the left-hand side, we have one mole of dinitrogen tetroxide. However, on the right-hand side, we have two moles of nitrogen dioxide. So that means that if we increase the pressure, the equilibrium will move towards the left to reduce the pressure. The reaction mix will become less brown, as nitrogen dioxide converts to dinitrogen tetroxide. OK, now there is one final point that you need to understand. The position of equilibrium is only affected by pressure if the total number of moles is different on either side of the equation. In the reaction I'm showing here, hydrogen and bromine react to form hydrogen bromide. On the left, we have two moles of gas. And on the right, we also have two moles of gas. So this means that changing the pressure has no effect on the position of equilibrium of this reaction. In the next video, we look at the effects of temperature on reversible reactions. 